the propositional implies connective is really, really very simple, but its simplicity in some ways contradicts the way that the word is used in ordinary English. Uh, mathematicians have co-opted it and given it a technical meaning, and that is definitely confusing for some students, and you have to get used to it. So it merits a little video by itself, and that's what we're setting up now. So let's talk about implies. Uh, the basic rule is that the uh, composite expression P implies Q, where P and Q are propositional, are propositions that can take the true false value, is that the implication is false only if P is true and Q is false. The idea is that if the hypothesis P is true, then anything that it implies has to be true also. So the implies actually holds when Q is true and it fails when Q is false. Let's look at that as a truth table to see exactly what it means. Um, so here are the four possible pairs of truth tables for P and Q, and we see that the only place where it fails is when P is true and Q is false. Otherwise, it's a true implication. Now, the part that bothers people, of course, is the last line, but let's just, before we get to that, let's just note that by this simple definition, that P implies Q is exactly the same as saying that not P holds or Q holds. And that is, in a certain sense, an oversimplification of the way implies works in the real world, but it actually works out perfectly for uh, mathematical applications in logic. Well, so let's go on to look at the worrisome line in the truth table, which is exactly this last one, which is when both P and Q are false, P implies Q is considered to be true. Now, what's the rationale for that? Well, I can maybe help you understand it and think about it this way. Let's remember that example that we had in a, a few videos ago when we deduced that from one equals minus one that I am the pulp, or at least that was repeating Bertrand Russell's uh, famous uh, droll remark. If one equals minus one, then I am the pulp. Well, notice that um, the reasoning was absolutely correct, whereby we got the conclusion, which is the I am the Pope is the conclusion of the implies, from the false hypothesis that one equals one. But the reasoning that we used to go from one equals minus one to I am the Pope was absolutely correct. So, you know, you start off with something false, you can reason carefully, and it's not surprising you're going to reason you're going to arrive at something false. But the way you reason, the implies, is in fact entirely correct. So that we would say that this is a correct implication of a false thing from a false thing. And the implication overall merits being called true. So this does clash with uh, the, I, the intuitive idea that if you say P implies Q, you often think that P is a cause of Q, that P has something to do with Q. And that's not at all the mathematical meaning. So uh, the case where you think that something causal might be happening is if P and Q are both false and uh, Q does or doesn't cause P or does or doesn't cause Q, and you might want to have the truth or falsehood of the implication depend on causality. Let's look at an example of that. So suppose I say something like, if he had slept more, he would have gotten an A. Okay, uh, that's an if then. Uh, so short version is slept more implies got an A. Well, you might want to claim that this implication was false. Why would it be false? Well, because the sleepy student who didn't get an A actually got a poor grade because he hadn't studied. So it wasn't that he hadn't slept more, that he hadn't slept enough, but that he hadn't studied, which is why he didn't get an A. So it's not true that um, if he had slept more, he would have gotten an A, and we'd say the implication was false, because we're thinking about that we're asking whether slept more is the cause of the student not getting an A. Well, that's just not the way the mathematical reasoning works. Okay, uh, so this kind of causal counterfactual assertions, they, which make some sense, although they cause some philosophical problems, if you think carefully about reasoning contrary to fact, um, 
uh, it sometimes can be hard to make sense out of, but the main thing is that the mathematical propositional connective implies ignores causality, just doesn't have anything to do with that. The rules are false implies false is true. Um, false implies true is true. From false, you can conclude anything. Uh, and the only way that an implication can fail is if a true is implying a false. So this makes the mathematical implication very simple, but in fact, it's still useful, uh, as we'll see when we start making use of it.